Hey guys, Atlanta Sacolite here, and uh, yeah, today I decided to do a little something different regarding my video logs. I'm gonna show you uh, something that I've had for a little over a year now. This is my first car. I've had this car for a little over a year now, and I just kind of wanted to share it with you guys in case you were ever thinking about, you know, what would make for a good first car. So yeah, this is a uh, 2010 Toyota RAV4, and as you can see, for the purpose of this video, I've covered up my license plates, so that way nobody would be able to identify me. So I'll show you kind of some of the features this car has to offer, and uh, what you can do to upgrade it. So, probably the first thing you guys have noticed is that uh, this is a RAV4 Sport. So... It doesn't have the uh, tire on the back here, and honestly, I think it's kind of uh, kind of looks better that way without the tire, like the spare tire on the back. It's interesting because these tires are puncture resistant, so it's kind of a good way to balance it, I'd say. But yeah, I mean, overall, I think it has a very nice kind of. I mean, it looks okay for an SUV, I'd say. Kind of walk around and show you guys. And as you can see, the engine is a V6. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of dirty. I mean, I washed it recently, but as you can see, we've had some kind of icy weather around here. So yeah, interesting feature of this car is that it has the turn signals in the mirrors as well as on the front and the back. So, that's one good thing about it. As you can see, you got a reverse light here. You got your antenna, you got some bike mounts. One thing I don't like about the RAV4 is that you can't even pull out the uh, back wiper all the way. So, in icy weather, when you want to, like, prop those things up so they don't get stuck to the the actual, like, you know, the windshield or the window or whatever. Yeah, it's not going to be happening for this, but, I mean, we like this spoiler here. It kind of protects from ice falling down onto it, so I haven't had too much of an issue in that regard. Now, on a lot of SUVs, you would expect it to kind of, like, open up... You would expect it to like swing upward, but RAV4 is different in that it tailgate opens out sideways like this. So, yeah, I mean, you got a nice bit of internal storage. And you got like these compartments, so you can have like wiring or mess with the circuits out in there. And I know that there's a jack in this one too. So, um, and it also has like a internal storage compartment. As you can see, I got a mess of microfiber cloths in here. I've got a couple of emergency kits, ice scraper, LED flashlight. Got a jacket, and as you can see here, this is the factory stereo that came with the car. It's got an LCD display, and yeah, what I did was I modded the uh, car so that, you see right there, that's the aftermarket stereo that I installed. So, yeah, looking at it with the touchscreen display, it's pretty obvious to see why I decided to upgrade. And yeah, it's quite nice, but I'll get to that in a moment. And uh, another minor complaint I have about this car is the fact that uh, I live in the United States, so you're supposed to drive on the right side of the road. And because of that, normally you would pull up on the curb on the left-hand side. So that makes this kind of setup a little 
unoptimized because if you're parked on the side of a curb you normally expect it to open like away from the curb for ease of like loading convenience but oh well I mean I haven't had to load anything really significant in so it's not really a big deal and it opens out pretty far too like goes at like a 90 degree angle so as long as you have enough room back here then I guess it's okay So, work our way up. So this is the, uh, the back seats. These are hardly ever used because I seldom ever drive anybody. And what's good is that, ah, come on. Really fun doing everything with one hand. The seats, like on most SUVs, can fold down so you can get some more space back here. And uh, I got yourself a nice mat here. That didn't come with the car. I put it in myself. Yeah. I've been buying a lot of stuff for this thing. Given that it's my first car and, well, at least the first one that I've ever owned myself and I'm currently paying for. And uh, you know, one thing I didn't mention is that I got my uh, windows tinted. So... That's nice, yeah, where I live. And of course I got these. Yep. I don't know why that plastic thing chose to come off on me, but... Yeah, this is a weather mat, which is directly over the factory mats that came with the car. Yeah, you got some pockets back here in case you wanna in case you wanna like tuck anything in like I have these Ziploc bags here. I was driving for Uber and in case anybody needed to like vomit or something never hurts to have those. <laughs> so yeah I'm sitting in here and I have quite a surprising bit of leg room. So yeah it's really really nice if you're a passenger in this car, which I seldom ever am. But, uh, and right here you got an additional seatbelt for the middle passenger, in case you ever want to, like, yeah, ride up to five people in here, or just in case somebody really wants to ride in the middle. And then you got Middle seat becomes a cup holder. So, yeah, if you're carrying two people back here, they can easily store their drinks right in here. Okay. Uh, hair. My dogs. Speaking of which, I gotta get this thing vacuumed out. Now, we will work our way up to the front side of the vehicle, working my way around to the port side. Yeah, as you can see, this mat is dirtier than pretty much any other mat in this vehicle, just because I'm pretty much the only one in this car most of the time. And here's where most of the magic happens. As you can see, got a nice moonroof here. And I've also got some controls here for operating it. You can also alternate between if the light is off or if it comes on with the door. Same with that one back there. I always like to keep them on door. You've got your sun visors here. Then you got the airbag warning. And when you push this thing all the way, this cover all the way to the right light comes on, so it's good if you're in like a dim environment and you want to uh, do something like apply some cosmetics or whatever. Got your rear view mirror, standard in every vehicle. Also got this compartment up here for your sunglasses, or I keep my uh, garage door opener in it. 
And of course, got the aftermarket stereo right here. Really good. Has the option of putting an SD card in here, which I did to listen to my music on here. Yeah, I'm not one of those people who listens to public radio when I'm driving. I like to either drive with the radio off or just listen to my own music. And of course, you got that. I forget what it is, but you know, if I ever need to use it, I'll look up the manual. Then you guys got the emergency blinker light control right there. You have a microphone right there in case you want to use like a cell phone with Bluetooth. And of course, you got uh, sunlight glare. And then you got the HD right here. So yeah, you got miles per hour or kilometers per hour if you live outside the U.S. Got revolutions per minute, vehicle temperature, and fuel gauge. I really hate how a lot of vehicles are removing the battery monitor. Like, that would be helpful, even to this day. And then you got the downhill acceleration control, the brightness display for the HD, and you got the phone volume. In case you want to answer your phone using Bluetooth. it has got controls right here, which with this aftermarket stereo, you have the option of mapping like what you want each button to do. Got your got your transmission shaft right here. And of course, you got all your standard uh, standard basic controls. I prefer to keep mine on drive when I'm on the road. This is an automatic transmission, as you can see by the lack of a clutch pedal, because I cannot for the life of me drive stick shift. And of course you got this LED display, like LCD, I mean, I mean, yeah, which displays the time. I, I kind of wish this was like constantly on, so that way even if the car's off, you just say, like, look at the time and see what it is, but oh well. Then down here, you got a small storage compartment, and there's like a small light right here, or I think it's farther back, maybe. That you can basically store some things here. I like to store my sunglasses here. Then of course you got your power cable right here that it plugs in. Then you got this button. I forget what it is. I'll have to look up the manual. I'm not a huge car person. Then you got your glove box, which I keep my uh, vehicle registration and insurance information inside. And I keep it locked at all times. Then you got this additional storage compartment here. It's generally where I keep, like, tissues and other stuff. And of course you got, like, these nice air vents. One on the passenger side, one on the uh, driver's side. And of course you got, like, your window control on all four sides here and you can also lock the windows and you got lock and unlock the doors and you got these things which I assume for nervous people to like grab a hold of when somebody's driving and uh, yeah I think I might one day get my uh, windshield tinted with like the like sun guard I guess it's called um, oh yeah right here is a light sensor so what happens if you switch this to auto which I constantly have it on is where if you're driving in a low light environment the car will pick it up and it'll switch the headlights on or off as the need for light like varies per se, and it also changes the brightness of the heads-up display. Yeah, and the this aftermarket stereo stereo I have has its own manual brightness control. Like I keep these both at max brightness constantly. So yeah, and as you some of you may have probably noticed, I've also got a radar detector up here. So and I got this thing just to let me know if there were any cops around who could be trying to monitor my speed. And, yeah, you know, always never hurts to take an extra step to avoid getting a traffic ticket. One of my vents is partly down. There we go. Sorry, I'm just really OCD. 
So yeah, stereo's got all your basic controls like volume, menu, bandwidth, call, navigation, select tune, skip, play, all that, and a USB charger or micro USB. And yeah, it's got anti-theft. It'll know if the passenger seat has any weight on it, so it'll know to disable the airbag. You can adjust the clock using these buttons. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much all the features make it nice and good. You also got mirror controls down here and an auxiliary port in case you want to plug in like phone or something that you want to listen to music on. But, you know, I hardly drive anybody else around and I keep an SD card full of music on here. So, yeah, that's really nice. Got your parking brake. I hardly ever use that. And you, know, you also got these side pockets which you can store like a drink or something else small inside. As you can see, I got a bit of trash in here that I'm going to have to clean out. But, um, yeah, so, how I feel about it overall, I mean, I'd say it was definitely a car worth getting. Would it have been my first choice for a vehicle? Um, probably not. I mean, I'm not really too much of a sucker for SUVs. I, I probably would have preferred, like, a sedan or a coupe. But, I mean, the price point, like, my parents were able to get a connection for this vehicle through someone they know. Said he didn't want it anymore and decided, you know, he'd sell it to us. And my parents said, hey, would you like this car? So I said, yeah, I mean, if it's for that price, I'll buy it. And, you know, I mean, and this is an all-wheel drive vehicle, so given that it's pretty icy where I live, that's definitely a must. Yeah, like, if you live in an icy environment, you need an all-wheel drive vehicle. Otherwise, you're gonna exponentially increase your risk of accident or skid or whatever. But, yeah, I mean... It is a pretty modest vehicle. I mean, nothing special. And uh, this aftermarket stereo did include a backup camera, which I'm probably gonna have installed. It's a... It's a rear license plate mounted, goes on the back, like, and I'm still kind of debating whether I should install it myself or take it to some professionals, because I've looked up the process and I know how it's done, and it looks like something I could possibly do, but my question is whether or not I actually have the requisite skill to do something like it. So. But, yeah, I mean, it's a fairly decent first car, I'll say that. I mean... I'm fairly happy with it so far, but, you know, my next car is definitely going to be, uh, preferably a coupe, a nice two-door. I mean, you can't go wrong with Toyota, I mean, they're, they're pretty reliable, especially the RAV4. I mean, you got, like, a cruise control stuff. I mean, horn, it's fairly, like, you know, standard. So, yeah, I mean, anyway, that's pretty much all I have to really say about this car. It's a, it's a fairly modest car. It's got good fuel economy, so, you know, can't really complain too much. But yeah, I really gotta take her to the wash and get her cleaned up. Again. Either that or I might wait until the icy weather passes and uh, just, you know... Just kind of bite the bullet and have her be dirty until the weather clears up and... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with her. So... I'll go ahead and show you what it's like to start her up. So, stick the key.
key in there, like always, and And there you go, it's telling me to buckle up. So that's how you do it. And he had the Toyota logo right there, and oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention that uh, with this particular stereo I have, you can like set it to automatically switch on the navigation mode, which I did just that and I prefer. So that way once I'm on the road, you know, I can just hit the map button and then it'll show me where I am. It takes a little moment for it to get the GPS satellites though. So, yeah. And I pulled this out unintentionally when I was showing you it. So I plugged it back in and now my radar detector is switching on. Yeah, I mean, I've had this radar detector now for, like, about a week, and so far it's been doing a pretty good job. Whenever it lets me know that there's a cop nearby, I instinctively start looking around, and there's always a cop, so... Yeah, this is a whistler, and... So far, from what I've noticed, they're pretty reliable. I mean, I've gotten a few false alarms every now and then, but, you know, just a matter of adjusting the sensitivity where, wherever you're at. I prefer to keep it on highway mode at times, but, you know, if I'm in really heavy traffic, I'll switch to city mode. Yeah, I mean, this has got really good ventilation, like, I can just, like, turn up the heat and it'll heat up this car, like, once the engine actually gets warm. How this thing handles on the freeway, I mean, it's pretty zippy. Uh, I can go from zero to 60 in, like, uh, I, I dare say seven seconds. But, um, I mean, the steering wheel handles really nicely. I mean, it's really nice and tight, turns smoothly, and gas pedal accelerates nice and good. Brake pedal feels good ever since I got the brakes replaced on this thing. And would you believe that I got this car for about $10,000 when the mileage is not even 50,000 miles? It was even less than that. Like, it was probably 45,000. Or. Probably even 40,000 when I got it. I forget, but, uh. Yeah. Even though it's not my first choice for a car, given that I'm not a huge fan for SUVs, I mean, it's a pretty nice, you know, compact crossover. It's got a little. A lot of internal space, and, I mean, looks really clean, aside for, you know, some of these, like, smudges from, like, dust that I gotta get wiped up. So, anyway, it's pretty much, I guess I'm gonna pretty much wrap up this video now. I just kind of wanted to show you guys my new car, my first car, so... You know, if you're looking for a vehicle and you want to get all-wheel drive, something that'll handle in the snow and is good and reliable, then this is probably the car for you. So, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you all continue to support me. Have a good day.